In the last video, we proved the volume of a sphere using the single variable technique called cylindrical shells. In this one, we're going to be using single variables again, and we're going to be using a different technique, which is actually faster. We're going to be using the um, disk technique. How this works is we first draw a semicircle again, but this time instead of drawing the right-hand semicircle, we're going to be drawing the upper portion of the semicircle. Again, the formula is x squared plus y squared equals r squared for the full circle. This is half of it. Um, the formula is actually y equals radical r squared minus x squared, but we'll just leave it as this for now. So the idea now is that we're going to start on the left-hand side, and we're going to again draw a small rectangle. But instead of revolving it around the y-axis as we did before, we're going to revolve it around the x-axis so that what we end up forming is a small cylinder. Because if we take a rectangle and revolve it, we're going to form essentially a cylinder. So now the idea is that we're going to form bigger and bigger cylinders because we're going to be taking bigger and bigger um, rectangles over here. And we're going to keep doing this. And as you can see, it starts to resemble a sphere. My drawing isn't that great, but um, when it gets to here, this rectangle, this is the maximum rectangle, so we're going to reach some kind of maximum, you know, radius of the sphere, and then it's going to taper down again. It's going to decrease in size, and we end up forming this sphere kind of shape, if I had drawn a little better. But, um, and how are we going to do this? So again, it's going to be with respect to x, because we're taking rectangles that are going across the x-axis. So we know that we're going to be taking some kind of sum, which was represented by an integral when we're taking an infinite sum, and with limit, we're going to have it respect to dx. And x is going from what to what? Negative r to r, right? And then what goes on the inside? Essentially, how we find the volume of each of these disks is we do pi r squared, right? That's the volume of a that's the volume of, um, that's, sorry, the area of a circle. The area of the circle that's the top of the disk. And what's the height of each of these disks? It's dx. So we're going to put pi, and the r in each case is actually our y value, correct? And our y value is given by this equation. So it's going to be radical r squared minus x squared, that quantity, squared. And we can simplify this a little bit. We're going to pull the pi out, and we're going to get r squared minus x squared dx. Now, we can just go ahead and integrate this. No use substitution is required, and we get r squared x minus one-third x cubed, taken from negative r to r. And when we do this, let's do this over here. And when we put in r into this equation, we get r cubed minus one-third r cubed minus, um, we're going to get negative r cubed plus one-third r cubed. And when we work this all out, when we solve all this out, we're going to get four-thirds r cubed. And don't forget the pi that we took out in the beginning, put it back in. And we get four-thirds pi r cubed, which we know as the volume of our sphere. It's actually a quicker method, works faster, and our two point. the important thing is that our two methods match, which shows that this is the correct formula. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this.